Welcome everyone to one of the Meet the Filmmakers session of Spark Animation 2022. My name is Clara Chan. I am a visual effects supervisor at Sony Pictures Imageworks by day and an independent filmmaker by night and weekend. So today I am super, super excited to have the opportunity to talk to Joel Gonzalez. He is the writer, director, and many other roles of the short film called Ice Merchants. And Ice Merchants is the winner of this year's Spark Animation Best in the Show Award. And besides that, it has already won numerous awards across the world in different festivals. So really, really congratulations and so welcome, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to, to be here. Yeah. Cool. And thank you for reaching. Yeah, you've been traveling a lot, right? Yeah, we've been having a lot of luck. The film uh, luckily is being well received by people. And uh, that's what we like the most is that people keep, the people keep seeing the film and that they keep connecting with the film. That's the, the biggest joy, I think, about making doing filmmaking. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. And I just want to dive right in and um, <laughs> talk about behind the scenes, how you make this film. Um, so first of all, where did the idea come from? What is the origin story of your film? Yeah, uh, so I have a similar process with uh, all my films. I, I did two films before this one. Uh, they were student films. Uh, this one technically is still kind of a student film because it started as my graduation project from Royal College of Art. But uh, my films are always born out of a, an idea that comes to my head and sticks with me. You know, those kinds of images that you have uh, where, when you're just about to fall asleep or while you're dreaming, sometimes like a deja vu, like something comes to your head during the day. And what I do is when I have one of those scenarios that resonate with me, I start uh, drawing compulsively about it. I start writing about the scenario. Uh, I start asking questions like, uh, how would someone live there? For example, for this film, the initial image was the tiny house on a, a big, big cliff. And the more questions I start to ask, I start get, having more answers. And then that's when I start having ideas for the proper narrative of the film. Uh, from the beginning, I know uh, roughly what type, of, what type of film I want to do, like in terms of drama, but the particularities of the narrative start to reveal themselves the more I uh, discover the scenario where the film is going to take place. Something that I always, uh, always do in pre-production, although I don't uh, use in the final piece, I know you're in 3D animation. What I, I don't use 3D animation for my film, but I always model the film's movie set in 3D. And uh, while I'm drawing it, uh, and that's a way of helping me discover the location. I can go into the file and I can virtually walk uh, through the location. And that instinctively will give, give me ideas for the narrative. It's a way of doing virtual location scouting, which is something that we can't do in animation because our film's location don't, don't exist in real life. So I, that's where all my, my films start. They start of a scenario that I keep exploring uh, as, as, good, as great, the best way I can and instinctively, I'll start to have ideas for the narrative. They always uh, naturally come to topics that are dear to me. I found that all of my dreams are in a way about loneliness, about isolation, about someone living yeah, isolated, isolated from society. And this one also covers a more humane topic in a way about loss and uh, about family connections and uh, how in a way like the small interaction that we have with our friends, or our family, in a way, that those small things that we don't take, uh, don't think are very uh, interesting or very important, at the end are the basis of a foundation between human beings, in a way. And in this film, like that foundation has a physical, physical representation. Cool. So an image comes to your head, and then you're starting to come up with a story mm -hmm. based on this image. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about your writing process, mm -hmm. how you construct the story? Yeah, yeah like I said, like uh, I, I spend uh, two months normally like uh, drawing, like my sketchbooks are full of sketches of the characters, are full of sketches of the plant of the, the house. Mm -hmm. Like I always had a big interest in architecture. I was even considering going there. 
But uh, I'm happy I didn't because I know I can plan my houses and they don't have to be safe. So I can go <laughs> really crazy. So it's more free. Um, uh, but yeah, so when I have a scenario like that, I start having ideas for, for, for the narrative. So most of my writing processes, uh, I have a huge document on my computer where I write bullet points about things that could happen. What if, what if, oh, and maybe something. And then I... I highlight the ones that uh, make make more sense in a way. I do something that they taught me in RCA as well, which is uh, basically trying to fill a full page uh, consecutively without stop. Like I just take a deep, deep breath and I just write everything that goes into my head. Even if what goes in my head is literally, I don't know what I'm writing, I will write it. And so I, I remember doing that several times. But most of my writing process is about discovering what story, uh, the, the particulars of the story. I remember for this one, I, I knew that I wanted to do a drama, uh, but those tiny things were, were something that I almost felt like I was discovering and not uh, creating. Like it goes to a point where I feel like the scenario exists and that's when I, I know that something interesting may happen there. And it's just a way of like spending time in that, mental state and uh, discovering more and more about the, the narrative and, and the place. Cool. And um, how long did it take to you to write the script? Uh, the script, uh, it's hard to say, you no, know, because when I, I start uh, production, I normally start production of the film, even when I'm entirely not sure what the film is going to be about. Mm. So it's an ongoing process. It's uh, like when I if the scenario that I know where the film is going to take place, I start uh, writing about it. But then like uh, normally I have like different endings. Uh, I would say that like the biggest chunk of the story, the basis of it, I think it would be like between, in, or was written in the first two months. But the more that I was starting to produce and discover about film, I start making like little tweaks and little changes uh, on the script that almost last until the end of the production. Mm -hmm. But I think like the biggest chunk of information, like the premise of the film was created in those first two months, initial pre-production two months. Right, yeah. We all know that making a film <laughs> is an iterative process. Yeah, Never that's the fun part. Yeah, the more fun, yeah. most fun part of it, I think. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, the story, I want to talk about the story. It's such a rich story. Um, on the surface, it is about father and son, they make ice, they sell ice and their journey and what they went through. But then there are deeper levels of messages that you're trying to tell. So can you tell us what you're trying to say through the story? What messages you're trying to send? What kind of feelings? Yeah, it's, I think the main premise of the film is what I briefly told in the beginning is, I think I, I try to, the film tries to study those small behaviors that we have with people, like those uh, routines that we have every, every day with people that we know. And I think the film tries to study them metaphorically as the foundation of meaningful human relationships. So like not spoiling the film, like at the end, it's in a way it's those, those small interactions are what uh, saves the, the, the narrative at the end. I think that's the main premise of the film. Uh, and that's what I, I think I intended to do from, from the beginning. That was the main point. But it's interesting because uh, along the way, while I was producing the film, I feel like the narrative also gained another connotations and relations. For example, the environmental like issue mm -hmm. um, about climate change. Uh, which is something that I was not initially like on my plans when I was writing the film, but that naturally, organically uh, was connected with the film when I started unveiling like the, the drama of the film. And uh, again, I don't want to spoil the, the film, but for example, I knew there would be like uh, at some point in the film, like a drama twist, like a, a climax. And... Uh, I, at, so, at the end, like that the climax is connected with uh, cl climate changes, but uh, it was something that uh, I, I, I had that idea midway production. It was not something from early start. So that uh, climate change uh, issue was something that appeared organically in film's production, although it wasn't the main point of, of the film at the beginning. 
Uh, but yeah, like you said, it's interesting how things like start to change and build up the more we discover about the film we're doing. This always deviates slightly from our original premise. Yeah, I find that um, every time I watch it again, I find <laughs> something else that is in it. Um, <laughs> that's just the magic of films. It <laughs> invokes something in each uh, audience differently. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, so let's see. Um, the film is about 14 minutes long. So can you tell us how long did it take from start to beginning, uh, mm -hmm. start to end the whole production? How long did that take? Uh, the whole production, I think it was stretch uh, in, along uh, between like two years, I think. Mm -hmm. But I was doing a lot of uh, some commissions in, in the middle. So it was not two straight years. We, I think if we condense everything, I would say that like it was a very intensive, like one year and win an year and a half, like years of, of production. And um, like our animation team, for example, is not, not very big. It was just me and another, another person. It's, it's, her name is Alan Nuno. She's an amazing, amazing uh, Polish animator that now is based in Portugal, in Porto, where I live. And uh, but each of us animated roughly like seven or eight minutes of the film, but we were working like we were working like very intensively. Like I was working between twelve to fourteen hours every day, mm. and um, we had a huge help of like uh, an amazing coloring team. That's I think the team that we had more members working on. Uh, we also had amazing musicians that also participated in this film. Um, but yeah, it was a long and intensive, uh, I mean, it was not very long for uh, uh, short film standards, uh, for animation film standards, but it was very intensive, uh, very intensive one year and a half of production, I believe, yes. Yeah. And also it's, uh, it's uh, deviates because uh, it originally started as my graduation film from RCA. And mm -hmm. so at the first half, I was doing everything by myself. And then we were able to apply for funding and get a small team. And that way I was able to coordinate like some of the functions of the film. Great. Um, yeah, so just dive into more technical details. Mm -hmm. So this is a 2D frame by frame hand-drawn animation. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of software do you use? <laughs> I, <laughs> I use Photoshop, uh -huh. which uh, a lot of people think is very funny. Uh, so for Photoshop is not an optimized um, uh, software for animation. What happens is I always started with Photoshop from like two years ago, three years ago, and I got used to it. And at the same time, I feel like uh, it has the best pressures. And also this film initially was supposed to be drawn on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave up that to me yeah. because of um, logistic reasons. For example, I was doing half of the animation in Portugal. I was uh, at the time doing half of the animation in, Paris, in France. Like uh, with all the paper, it would be like a huge mess, like printing everything and then sending back to Portugal. To... So I decided I would find a way of simulating like the original aesthetic of the film. And I feel like Photoshop was the, the most indicated like software to do it. And, uh, but uh, even though like I did all the, my part, I did the all animation in Photoshop and I also did the cleanup and post-production in Photoshop, but uh, Alan Nunu for her part, she was animating uh, in TV paint. Oh. So, so, oh, and we all combine. So mm. there's, if you notice very, like there's slightly different sometimes in some shots in terms of like the stroke of the brush, but at the end, uh, I think no, it's not noticeable. And mm. also because, when we draw and animate with um, with pencil, it's always slightly different. Like it's never exactly the same from shot to shot. So I think it's completely uh, completely works. So I did my half of animation in Photoshop, and she did half of, her half of animation in TV Paint. Wow! Yeah, that's really interesting because it looks seamless to me. I couldn't tell. Oh, good to know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's see what else. Um, so the design, let's talk about the design of the film, the characters, it's such a unique look and it's beautiful and it has a really limited color palette, um, but it's really memorable. It's one of the films that sticks in my head after I watch like 90 films. Um, Thank you so much. 
Yeah, so what is your design philosophy or how did you come up with this design? Yeah, it's like all of this is like uh, condensed in those two months of pre-production. Mm -hmm. I, for me, the color palette is one of the most important uh, things aesthetically in, in the way I do films. Like all my other two films that also have a very limited color palette. And I, I decide the color palettes uh, firstly because with colors that I like. Um, and it's interesting because I start on the first day with like uh, two colors or three colors or four colors. And then every day I slightly adjust them. Like every day I do like some tweaks. And after two months, I'll have like the final like color palette. Always, when I went to this color palette, they were always like red and blue, but like only always slightly changing the, those tonalities. So yeah, I I, I think my, my style is uh, it's just where I always drew in the, in my my uh, graphic diaries. I always had a big interesting a big interest uh, with um, uh, strong dark shadows. Uh, with uh, exaggerated perspectives like I uh, because I always wanted before to go to architecture I always love to draw buildings and landscapes characters is something that I started doing more, more recently and when I did start doing characters I always liked like um, characters with elongated limbs and like very so I don't know I think that's uh, always instantly uh, how I liked to draw mm -hmm. I, I can't say for example exactly what are my references because I I don't use like mood boards or anything. I, I try to concentrate, uh, to create something that resonates with me. But uh, you know, unconsciously, we always take inspirations from from things that we like and we saw before. But uh, yeah, this was always my way of drawing. I always like limited color palettes, strong dark shadows, and uh, perspectives like uh, exaggerated perspectives. Like yeah, it's really beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. And also, just a side note: for example, in this film, uh, that there's red and there's blue. And I think the main point is to contrast the the coldness of like the 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 blue, like the entire landscape, with the warmer color of the house, which is in a way their safe spot. Mm -hmm. So I think the characters in this film are warmer, and they con contrast in a way with the coldness and more black of the the way the place where they live. Cool. Yeah, I love those super long legs. <laughs> those <two. laughs> They're like two thirds of the body. Yeah, know? they are really exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> really fun. Um, so you are the writer, director, or one of the animators, and you did editing, you did <laughs> composing, you did so many things on your film. How? How? How is it possible? <laughs> uh, so my artistic background, my, my first contact with arts was music, actually. Mm -hmm. I started playing piano since a very young age. My, my father is also a, a musician. And um, so what happened, like, I had a weird path into arts because I basically uh, fell with a, uh, with a parachute in arts because I failed my math exam that would put me into engineering school. Uh -huh. And uh, so I was studying sciences in high school and then I didn't enter engineering. So I went to my second option at the time, which was arts. I, I, even, I didn't even consider doing it while I was in high school. But when I arrived there, I understood that it was, it was the thing that I, I really, really liked. And but, so by that time, I had stopped playing the piano like five, seven years ago. I started when I was very young, but I stopped when I was 13. And when I was in college, I discovered my love for animation and for illustration. And I also restarted to play the piano. And I remember then, even when I found out about animation in uh, my college, my college years, my main instinct was actually to finish my BA and just pursue piano. Like I, I wanted, my dream school was actually Royal College of Music in London. Mm -hmm. I ended up going to Royal College of Art. But uh, I wanted to finish my BA and just focus on my piano because I was really into it at the time. And so uh, as my final project in that BA, it was a multimedia arts uh, BA, I decided to try to do animation short film, a 2D. It's called Voyager. And I also composed in its soundtrack on piano. Mm -hmm. And whenever it would be shown on festivals, I would always propose the, uh, the festival directors if I could play it live at the same time as the film. And uh, initially, it was funny because I remember that I chose that format 
to challenge myself to play live more because I've been away from the stages for, for a long time. But what happened is like, uh, I was very fortunate to play that, uh, to present that film in some festivals in that uh, format. But I learned that I really, really liked the animation and filmmaking part. So I just decided to um, uh, pursuing animation and filmmaking and keep studying piano independently. So that's what I do. I always, uh, I'm always very interested in combining my musical background with my, my animation side in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, so m for me, like music is completely fulcral in, 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 for making films. Yeah, as you said, like the film is 14 minutes long. And if you combine all the music parts together, it's, I think it's not even five minutes, like four minutes. But uh, it's, I start making the soundtrack even before doing the, the visuals, because I don't know, just composing a piece of music like gives me ideas for visuals. And then when I'm doing the visuals, that gives me an idea for the music. And that goes like back and forth. And that also helps me having ideas for the narrative. Uh, so yeah, music is, for me is all, will always be something that is very important uh, for for my films, especially to set the film tone from a very early start. Like in this case, like that melancholic uh, sound, and it was something that I worked in pre-production as well in those two first months. So those two first months when I started in pre-production is to to set like the the initial exactly where it's gonna how the film will feel. That's what I tried to get in those two first two months. And then I spend the rest of the production like finding smaller particularities of narrative, but how, how the film will feel and the, the, the end results in terms of aesthetics are all prepared in the first two, two months. I, another thing that I do in those two first months, when I start the film's production, at least normally for the first two minutes of the film, I like to have those two first minutes already like fully rendered, like already with the coloring and all the textures. And after those two minutes, I'll start to, okay, do the animation. And when I finish the animation, doing the coloring. But it's very important that I have the first two minutes already fully finished it because it really helps me like to feel the film stone and gives me inspiration for the rest of the production. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> cool. So, you went to Royal College of Art in the UK and then um, graduated not long ago. And what are you doing after that? Uh, yeah, as soon as I finish my, 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 my master's, this film, as I said, well, is technically my graduation film from RCA. I just kept working on it like for the last one year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I was doing some commissions. And uh, yeah, right now I'm just uh, taking a break. <laughs> I needed a, a bit of a break, so I'm just following the film where where it's heading with festivals, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, making some connections. But uh, after graduation, graduating, I basically just kept doing the film, kept uh, working on the film, and doing some some commissions. So professionally, that's what I'm doing at the moment, and I hope I can start a new film next year. Wow, great! So, um, is that what you? Um plan for your career you're just going to keep making short films or long films um, <laughs> and be a filmmaker i mean i hope so it's what i definitely it's what i like to do the most mm -hmm. uh and especially because i i can i'm able to combine with uh, with the other area that i also love which is music that's what i i mean if i'm able to and if people uh, want <laughs> want it and they keep funding my films uh, that's what i hope i can keep doing uh, to to both like keep studying filmmaking animation and its combination with music and sound. I think that's what fits me the most. Cool. Um, are there um, particular films that you really loved and inspired you? Uh, yeah, of course, of course. I I feel like the the first film that I saw that really made me understand like uh, the power that animation has like uh, for example in the short film form to combine so many things in such such a short amount of time i think it was le maison in petit coups by kunio kato uh i think that was uh, that was actually the film that uh, they showed me in college that uh, made me understand okay i i really like this and i i want to try doing it but at the time that i saw it i i never thought that I would actually actually continuing studying it afterwards. 
at that time, I just wanted to to keep studying piano intensively, <laughs> I think. But yeah, there's a lot of a lot of amazing, amazing short films. Even in Portugal right now, there are amazing, amazing directors. Regina Pessoa, all the films from Bando Apart, uh, Bruno Caetano. There's the we are having a very amazing time in animation, and we always ahead. Like uh, there's a lot of animation that was done like in the 60s, 70s, 80s. That uh, it's amazing, and it's sometimes it's um, sad that not more people have contacts with it because amazing things are being uh, are, were done in the short film form mm -hmm. animation. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, send me a list of. Uh, <laughs> I have one list. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Um, let's see what else. So besides making films, just talking more casually, are there any other hobbies you have besides music and films? Those are my main ones. I I feel like I'm fortunate because I was able to to combine my hobbies with uh, what with my professional life. And luckily, I'm not uh, I I'm not angry with either of them yet. Uh, so, but uh, those are my main hobbies, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> those are my main hobbies, I think. You're passionate about films and music, and it's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, illustration. Yeah, but illustration is merged into animation. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's what I like to do. I think. Mm -hmm. Any particular film director that influenced you? Yeah, definitely Kunio Kato uh, from Le Maison Petit Coups. Um, aesthetically, I always loved uh, George Swiss Gable, of course. Mm -hmm. And there's some similarities as well, like with the strong dark shadows. Uh, I feel when I was in college, like I was a lot of uh, very influenced by short films that I saw in Shorts of the Week. At the time, there was films from Alex Grieg, um, uh, David O'Reilly as well. Uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> at the time, I, get, I, I, I keep forgetting their names when I, I'm asked on the spots, but uh, there's a lot of amazing, amazing directors that, of course, influenced me. Cool. Well, um, thank you so much for giving us so much um, insight on your filmmaking process. It was really inspiring for me and I'm sure to a lot of our audience. And Thank you so much, Brendan. Wish you good luck for uh, continual success on your film, Ice Merchants, and your upcoming projects, whatever you're going to do. I'm sure they will be amazing. So. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. And um, thank you everyone for joining us this uh, Meet the Filmmaker session. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day and um, have fun on the, for the rest of the Spark Animation Festival. Bye.